put my hands up and Dave said, trust me, do you trust me? And I said, sure. And this is what was birthed. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is what was birthed. Um, this is 35 inch, inch and a half scale. Um, it's, and it plays, I can play anything with it. Um, country, rock, jazz, R&B, pop, reggae, anything. Um, I get so many compliments on the tone of the bass. Um, it never gets lost. Right. You know, and ours, you know, equated to like a piano sound, you know, it's right. such a rich, a rich tone, very distinct. Um, and uh, all I have to do is make sure I'm on my job. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with this instrument, there's just there's so many possibilities that sometimes feels overwhelming. Well, I'll get on the gig and it feels like, well, what do I what do I want my bass to sound like today? Right. How do uh how do I tailor the thing for what room we're in? If it's a different amp, you know, maybe the sound person they're less experienced than others. Right. And then be, even beyond that, like, do I feel like switching it up today? Because, you know, there's some instruments where you kind of find what the instrument does and you roll with that. And you, right. you don't want to try too much because if you, if you get away from what it does well, then maybe you put your bandmates in a situation where they can't depend on you as much because your tone is suffering. Right. But to I, the point, you know, I feel like I really, you know, these are instruments of service. So there's the obligation to not just have tone that we as bass players find appealing. But what's right. the tone that is going to give the drummer what they need? Like, are we in a room where the subs are just screaming? So... There's plenty of low end, but they need a little bit more definition so they can hear what's happening to adjust their kick to, or the other way around, you know, is, is the keys player getting into a lot of different harmonic stuff. So they need to hear the way I'm going to respond to that and support that, you know, all these things, these little considerations, I feel like they're so critically important to, to good foundational and functional bass playing. And I feel like with this instrument, the, the tools are here to be able to, to sculpt the tone to whatever's needed in a given gig, in a given club situation, whatever. That's a really good point. And um, my goodness, I'm using uh, Oceana tonight, yes. uh, the six string. I took a break for a while because I was obsessed with my fretless bass <laughs> and, and the new P bass right, that, that right. you guys have very generously uh, uh, let me use. And um, uh, But back on the six string, so uh, yeah, man, you, that six string's a beast. You put it down for a while <laughs> and then pick it up again, it's like... Wow, well, we, some work to do. We were surprised, we were surprised last time around, you know, you were playing the P for like most of the gig. And we were like, it was just amazing that, you know, you, you had to do the same job with less. Right, right. Yeah, uh, it, it wasn't missed. Oh you know? man, absolutely the same job with less. And right. I mean, therein lies some challenges and some, you know, uh, like uh, a different approach and, and stuff like that. But with the P bass with this band, I mean, hearing that sound and like, it's almost like being transported back in time, you know? <laughs> but I was hearing things differently and I, I felt like playing different ideas and different, right. you know, um, so it was, it was fantastic. And again, the guys, trust my judgment my yeah. intuition and and they loved it as well yeah and, it really big. man absolutely and it's uh, such a great instrument and four <laughs> strings as well so yeah. that that was just it was so lovely to play a four string again it had been a while you took it right way back to the basics <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Works definitely my choice by far for electric bass. Uh, at this point, I own five, and uh, I think a sixth is on the way. <laughs> Just got to figure out what I want. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, I first met Dave. Oh my God! Like, I want it, 20 years ago, I guess maybe. Um, he was recommended to me to do some work on the basses I was playing at the time. Um, just uh, electronic work and like some setup work and things like that. So that's when we first met. And then I remember when Base Day was still happening. Uh, the Manhattan Dave Center? Little, yeah, the Manhattan yeah. Center. Yeah, yeah. Um, when that was still going on, Dave had a booth there. And I remember going and playing his basses and being like, oh my God, these are uh, amazing, you know, amazing instruments. Um, but I think, it, you know, at the time, I think I was broke, you know, college student, I was <laughs> broke. So what I had is what I had. Right. Uh, and then several years went by, and actually I didn't see Dave. And then it was probably another, I can't remember, maybe three or four years after that, maybe even five or six. But um, it was another, it wasn't base day, but another kind of thing where Dave had a booth. And at this point, I was making some more money, <laughs> you know, and a little more financially better, uh, more, you know more happening financially so uh um i i saw him again and, and kind of re, re we kind of saw each other after not seeing each other for a bunch of years and then after like one second of playing the basses he had there i i told him this and he'll tell you that the story is true i, I was like dave i have to buy this bass right now <laughs> right now at that time i was playing some other basses and, and stuff and i was kind of like oh i guess these other basses are all right but then like after a second of playing Dave's, i was like this needs to be my bass right now uh, and that, that bass was currently owned by somebody that, that <laughs> let Dave use it for the show. So right. I couldn't get that bass. And I was like, oh, I was like, Dave, I'll write you a check right now. But he was like, oh, I can't. Wow. So then I think that spurred the conversation for my first Cremona from Dave. Um, and then, you know, I think probably a month or two after that, we got together and talked about what I wanted. And then uh, it was built. And then there was like the first Cremona that I had. Uh, and since then... I've got a couple Cremonas. I got a six string fretted, a six string fretless. Um, I have a five string fretted. Uh, all amazing, all beautiful. And then, of course, the RS series came out. Right. And I was like, this is amazing. So I have a five string fretted. And I just got my five string fretless two days ago. <laughs> we're going uh, to show that in the video. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely take it out. But I mean, they're just, just amazing on all levels. I mean, tone aside, like every time I play it, everybody always compliments it sound and the band and, and um, you know the, the front of house and the monitor guys everybody they're always complimented uh, so sound aside they're still the, like the most comfortable instruments I've ever played the balance is perfect um, you know the ergonomics is perfect you play it on your leg and it sits exactly where it's supposed to sit it doesn't like it doesn't do anything <laughs> like that balance is perfect everything is exactly where it needs to be so Sound aside, the, the, the feel and the, and the balance and the construction is, is, is amazing and it just doesn't compare to anything else.